Good day, everyone. My name is Dr. Yusuf Masalam, and I am the Executive Director of Student Achievement for the Denver Public Schools. Today, I will be reading the story called The Legend of the Potoski Stone. The Legend of the Potoski Stone is about stones found on the beaches of Potoski, Michigan. I enjoy March's Reading Month because it gives me an opportunity to read these wonderful stories to students across the district all month long. So we'll begin with the story of the legend of the Potoski Stone. A father and his son were walking along the beach, searching for Potoski stones. They looked through rocks that had washed up near the water's edge. They sifted through sand and pulled stones from the shallows of Lake Michigan. The father was watching the water roll toward shore when all of a sudden, a wave splashed at his feet. It was then he spotted the wet, gray stone. It was round and smooth and had a beautiful sunburst pattern upon it. As he plucked it from the sand, he asked his son, has anyone ever told you the story of the Potoski stone? Long ago in 1787, an Ottawa princess and her husband were leaving their winter home. He was a French fur trader who had been welcomed into her tribe as an honorary chief, and he had worked through the winter collecting furs in an area we now call Chicago. But when spring arrived, it was time for them to travel back to their summer hunting grounds along the shores of northern Lake Michigan. The family traveled day after day, but the journey was slow and hard because the princess was ready to give birth. One night, as they neared the mouth of the Kalamazoo River, she could not travel any further. The family made a shelter, and while the princess remained behind the deerskin door of the hut, her husband waited outside, listening to the night sounds and admiring the stars in the sky. The princess began to give birth to the baby as the chief waited nearby. Hours passed and the stars dimmed. The moon began to fade and the night animals became quiet. But as it became almost silent, only moments before the sun was ready to rise, the joyous cry of a newborn child filled the woods and echoed over the water. The chief held the baby in his hands, feeling deep and instant love. At that moment, the sun rose, casting ribbons of beautiful light through the trees, as sunshine fell softly upon the baby's face, the father said, He shall be Petoskoi, and he shall be an important man. He named him Petoskoi because the word meant the rays of the rising sun, or sunbeams of promise. He knew this was a good name because it meant there was always the promise of a new day. As his father adored him, Petosogoy was bathed in the most beautiful morning light, and it seemed as if the nearby lakes, rivers, and forests whispered his name in approval. Not long after, the family reached their village in the north woods where the baby known as Petosogoy grew into a young boy. He loved to play in the lake and could easily catch the biggest and best fish. Petosogwe also liked to hunt for food. He would walk quietly through the woods, and always, when he found his game, he was thankful and useful with it. And when the snow arrived, Petosogwe went in search of animals for their fur. Furs would keep his family warm or be traded for goods. He set traps and snares in the forest and grew better at the challenge every year. 
As Pesaguay grew to manhood, he became such a skillful hunter that one year he killed 40 bears and sold their hides for a very good price. Over time, Pesaguay became a fur trader like his father had been. He traveled by water to Indian villages, collecting furs. He piled his birch bark canoe high with pelts and raised a sail made from an old blanket. As it gathered breeze and pushed him along, he sailed through an inland waterway to the east side of Michigan. From there, he pushed on to Mackinac Island, where he would trade them for goods. Persegue loved his homeland along the shores of northern Michigan. It seemed as if all nature belonged to him and that he had a special place along the bay. Eventually, Pettisigüe married and became a father. He was now a headman, which meant he was the third in line in his tribe. This was a place of honor, one that he earned through his intelligence and fairness. Over the years, Pettisigüe was such a successful trader, hunter, and farmer that he was able to purchase land near a beautiful river that danced like a ribbon through the forest and flowed right into the big lake. It was known as the place where bears walked beside the flowing waters, and Pettisigüe liked it very much. So Pettisigüe built a wooden home there at the edge of the lake, settling on the shore where the sand rippled in waves among small gray stones. But things were beginning to change. A town was beginning to grow in the area near Pettisigüe's home. Pioneers came from the east to build homes deep in the woods. Farmers came to plow long stretches of grass into farms. Business people came to build lumber mills and stores. One man, Hiram O. Rose, came to set up a general store and other businesses. He quickly became friends with Pettisigüe and began to call him Chief Pettisigüe as a sign of respect. Because most people knew Pettisigüe, I liked him very much. It wasn't long before the whole town began to call him Chief as a sign of admiration. But the growing area needed an official name. So one night, several people gathered to choose just the right one. It didn't take long for everyone to agree that it should be named Petoskey, after Chief Pettisigüe. True to the words his father spoke the moment he was born, Chief Pettisigüe was becoming an important man by leading his name to the town he loved. And in return, Pettisigüe was loved by all. It wasn't long before people from other places wanted to visit the town named after Pettisigüe. Some came by steamship, while others came by train. They came to enjoy the beautiful lake and to breathe the fresh air, but they also came to walk along the shore and search for a special stone that appeared to hold the rays of the rising sun inside. Because the stones seemed to be found everywhere near Petoskey, they soon earned the name Petoskey Stones. The father shifted the stone from one hand to the other, admiring the sunburst made so long ago. When I find a Petoskey stone, he told his son, I know that I hold the spirit of Petoskey in my hand. I carry the promise of tomorrow, which means I will have one more day in the place I love best, with the person I love most. With that, the father placed the Petoskey stone into his son's hand and whispered, That place is here, and that person is you. The little boy held the stone as tight as he could and looked at his father with love. And just then, as sunlight fell upon them, it seemed as if all the nearby lakes, rivers, and forests whispered Petoskey's name once again. Today, when people search for Petoskey stones, they hope to find the rays of the rising sun. And when they do, they carry sunbeams of promise the face of Pesquay, who was showered with the rays of the rising sun from the moment he was born. Each stone is a reminder of the man who gave his name to the land he loved and to the beloved stone that offers the promise of a shining new tomorrow for everyone. And that is the story and the legend of the Petoskey Stone named after Chief Pesquay.